Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilas. This is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube covering all aspects of the game and aims to provide insights and resources to help you improve. Today is all about making the heart of your base. The manufacturing hub will create everything you need to build, expand and grow your base. Let's start by addressing the elephant in the room. This is not a mall, this is a hub. A mall is a suburban commercial hellhole full of useless stuff. I don't want to build that in my base. A hub, on the other hand, is the center of a logistics operation. It comes from the analogy of the wheel with a central hub connected with spokes to all parts of the wheel. This hub is the center of your base and provides material to all parts of your base. So shouldn't it be clear which one you want in your factorio base? Let's build the hub. Each episode starts as a workshop session streamed live on my Twitch channel. This is over at twitch.tv slash Ninos. The link is in the description below. You're very welcome to drop by. This usually happens on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central European time. Feel free to drop by and help decide, design and discuss upcoming guides. Our collaborative designs are always superior to what I could have built myself. If you like the video and want to see more, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you have ideas, comments or feedback, you're very welcome to leave a comment below and or join the Discord server with more than 5,000 members discussing all the games we play here on the channel. I've split the hub into three distinct sections based on logical groupings, i.e. trains, belts, inserters, power. I've done this to improve the overview and make it easier for you to grab what you need in the hub. And based on resources to improve the efficiency and make fewer branches into the hub. Additionally, each hub is divided into three different tiers and these are unlocked at different tech levels. Tier 1 is the initial placement based on red and green signs being available. Tier 2 is based on red belts and assumes blue signs is available. Tier 3 is assuming every tech is unlocked and is using blue belts and all chests are converted to filtered logistic chests. Let's take a look at the first part of the hub. So as always I have these blueprint books. This blueprint book contains 9 blueprints, 3 of the hub sections with 3 tiers each. We're going to start with the first part, I call this belts and inserters and we're going to just start by stamping it down and then we can go through what it does. We also need to hook it up to the lines over on our bus to the side. There we go. So now we have this hooked up. This is belts and inserters. What you see is it will consume a very large quantity of iron. This is split by making it only stuff that requires iron and then circuits. We have here a lot of gear production that will go in Let's go a bit closer, go into our belt production and then go over to our inserter production. Then we have a few other things that also require only iron and, and circuits. So they are also added here as well. This will be built immediately when you have the possibility. So as soon as you establish the bus or whatever else structure you have, you want to build this because you want to build more of everything. The one thing you need to keep in mind or want to keep in mind is that at this point, you'll probably, as you can see, lots of iron being consumed and you probably don't have so much mining set up yet. So most of what you will build is yellow belts. For that reason, I have set the conditions. Maybe I should just go through how the conditions are set. They're set by wire conditions between the chest and the inserter, limiting it to 50 insert here. You can change this as you want. I've also set an outbound here to go into the next, which says only pick it up when it's greater than 25. This means we will never leave this empty or this one or this one in order to move them all over to the higher tiers. I do this because I, I want to make sure also likewise on this one, I'm creating 200 yellow inserters, but I will not start picking up from this one unless there is at least 50. As you can see here, it retains around 50 and then goes over and makes the blue inserters. So I'm limiting the amount of red belts that created red splitters, red belts, red undergrounds to rather low numbers because you will need some in order to go to the next tier of this hub section, but you don't need to build thousands of these at this point. Only when you can start feeding red belts inbound will you start wanting to, to do this upgrade. As you progress with your base and you will be unlocking blue signs and want to upgrade this because uh, you've been building more smelting columns, you're getting more inbound, you are now starting to take some of the red belts that you've created and you are now ready to upgrade the hub to red belts. So the first thing you do is of course take a upgrade planner and convert the whole damn thing to red belts. Done. 
Now that you can see that more things are coming in. And now we take the blueprint. Basically, we take our book here. You can see this one's overlapping. Now all of it is red. And then I scroll up by three. One, two, three. Then we get to pop belts and sodas number two. You can see here that it completely overlaps. And you can uh, see that there are some things that are being added. Let's add those immediately and see what comes in. So the main thing that we've added here is actually the stack inserters and the filtered stack inserters. Those are now being added here as well. Also very important. We need to make sure that we get red circuits in on this belt. So I'm assuming that now you have built it and then you are going to put it in on the other side of this belt. So that's coming in and it will start making these ones because that requires the red ones. It's uh, one of the few things that require red and that one is the other one. So this one will again uh, increase the increase the demand because we are now also scaling up these numbers they are now becoming much larger 100 what you will notice is that i've added the blue belts but at the blue science you do not have access to blue belts however when i upgrade to tier 3 i'm going to assume that you are that you already have these things what i mean by this is that when you upgrade this one to blue belts you of course need to have machines already making the blue belts so you want to have this but at the time you're building this you won't have the lubricant because that's advanced oil processing you won't have advanced logistics because that's purple science but you will have everything set up so that when you unlock it which is probably one of the first ones you might want to unlock you can just set the recipes and everything will start working again so aside from this we are also setting this quantity this was set to 100 now i set it up to 200 because in the mid game where you are your base is mainly red belts, you really want to scale up. And this is where you start tapping out bigger ore patches and also uh, set up trains and just really your logistics is scaling up quite dramatically here. While blue belts is very much like end game. So this is the second tier. Let's look at the final upgrade of this, this hub section, the tier three. At this point, we have been building a few blue belts. I would hope, there we go. A few, few blue belts, it's enough for us to upgrade. So we take an upgrade planner. You can look at the upgrade planner here. This upgrade planner is also upgrading the blue assemblers to yellow assemblers, and it's upgrading our chest to, to logistics chest, storage chests. So once that's done, there we go. We can now stamp down the last blueprint. And that last blueprint, this is the, the one we already have. So we scroll three up. Yep, and then get the final upgrade. This is very important, not just for the beacons. You can see I'm adding beacons here. That's not the only thing that actually adds. Also, every single one of these storage chests that have now been upgraded have a logistics filter. So storage chests can, can can take in anything in the logistics storage when it just needs to be stored, when you deconstruct something. But if you make a logistics filter here, that means this one can only accept the stuff that's in the filter. Which means that if you go somewhere else and deconstruct, or for example, when you upgrade from a red belt to a red belt to a blue belt somewhere in the base, the red belt will be brought back in here at higher priority, thereby making it recycle. One of the things that you have to be aware of and keep in mind about this setup is that if we look at the blueprint, it actually contains modules, uh, productivity modules. But productivity modules cannot be inserted on existing entities by a blueprint for some reason. It just can't. So you have to add these manually. This will really help lower the demand for iron coming in here and increase the amount of throughput going away, going here. But as you can see, this is pretty much consuming or very close to consuming two full blue belts. Only after we started adding the productivity modules can we see that it, it's not quite two blue belts being consumed. But keep that in mind, as long as you want blue belts produced, you are going to consume two blue belts of iron for this one in and of itself. That's going to be a lot. This thing is very much a late game, but on the other hand, it's built some big buffers here. While you're doing other things, let the base fill up your buffers so that when you need to expand, you have thousands of, of blue belts and that should be fine. So now we have the first section of the hub. Let's dive into the next section. The next section of the hub, we are going back into the early game. This is also something you want to stamp down 
immediately. So the, you will take all of the three all of the three sections of the hub. You want to put those the tier ones in immediately. So let's have a look at it. We have our blueprint. This is the one we already created. So we tap one up and then we get to the hub section number two. This is called assemblers, power poles and logistics. Let's put it in and then see what it looks like. So we can see here, the way this is defined is that you can see I still have iron coming in on one side, but on the other side, I do not have a corresponding iron item. However, instead of iron, I now have steel and copper. So what I'm trying to group together in this location is stuff that uses iron, circuits, steel and copper, but nothing more than that and not in really high quantities. And I was able to do something that makes sense. I've also been focused here on making sure that this location, there are a number of things that require copper wire and those copper wires need to be produced somewhere. At first I started with direct insertion, but it actually took up too many too many assemblers to feed it in. So the lecture turned out that it was better to put it on a belt, even though that's sort of against the normal common wisdom that you don't put low compression item like copper wire on a belt. But we'll do it this way because we have these four things right here. They are all requiring copper wire, but they're not requiring copper wire in the same kind of quantities that, for example, blue belts are requiring gears. So, and these will be just build them small buffers because when you need it, it's just nice that you can you can grab some grab some wires, some combinators, or some lights, but you don't want to to build like hundreds and hundreds of those either. I've also added turrets. They don't really fit in here, but they. Uh, they do fit in the sense that they can be used by, they use iron, gears, and copper. So let's put it in here because we have room for it. As this location, we have assemblers being built and then also some steel chests in preparation for logistics chests moving on. Here we have our power poles, very important to get that up and running. And that's basically all that this one does. This is, as you can see, maybe you don't feel that these items are particularly useful, but it's something that I use a lot in my bases, so I wanted to put them on the hub. Similarly to the first hub section, now you have unlocked blue signs, you have unlocked the red belts, and you want to do an upgrade. So let's start by doing an upgrade to red belts. Things are just coming in more quickly, but that's all that really changes at this point. Let's take a look at our next one. This is the one we have, except for the red belts. One, two, three. And then we can see how much is being added. Let's stamp it down and go through each one of those in turn to figure out what is being added. Now, one of the first things that you maybe notice is that I've actually added, I've added modules here, productivity modules. I find those to be incredibly useful. Yeah, productivity modules one, they give us, they give us some productivity that we can need for some of the expensive science, get just a bit more productivity, get just more resources out. Efficiency modules, I like those for miners. Miners are way out in the wilderness close to biter bases so if you can lower the lower the power that's nice but mainly lower the pollution because the pollution being generated by a mining field is quite a lot so this one can actually help you if you don't want your mining outpost to trigger every single biter on the map over here we have our steel chests are now being used also here to make logistics chests and here at the tail end of this hub section we have substations and robo ports being built the one thing that isn't actually available at this tech, this is similarly to the blue belts of the previous setup, is of course the yellow assembler. The yellow assembler is only or is only available at Purple Science, and you most likely well, you don't have it by this time. However, when we do the upgrade, we are going to assume that you have the Purple Science unlocked, and therefore we want to build this even though it's empty, because if nothing else, it just stands here accumulating some speed modules. Speed modules are nice, and when you have the recipe, you can tap it in here and then immediately start using the buffers already stockpiled into converting it to, to more yellow assemblers. So that's why I'm putting it in here, even though it's not available at this tech level. Now you have reached the end game and all of the tech is unlocked, and you want to make sure that your this hub section is also producing the remaining stuff you need. So as usual, the first thing we do is upgrade. This upgrade does three things. It upgrades from red to blue belts, it upgrades from blue to yellow assemblers, and it upgrades the chest to storage chests. 
let's hit it. That's pretty quick, thanks to our magical robots. And then we built the next one. We have this one, two, three. Stamp it down. And let's have a look at what's being added. So the things that are being added, first, what is being added is actually a filter for all of these. This is very important. So you must stamp this down if you do the upgrade. It's adding the remaining logistics chests, of course, taking the blue ones first out on this line because the blue ones are way more important than the active. And then if you want the green ones, you can take, get the green ones. Yes. Also the last bit here, beacons. Beacons have to be put here. It fits quite well because it's kind of the same thing, but it also requires copper wire or copper cable. So you need the cable, but you will need the cable for just one more thing. So all those seven things requiring copper cable all collected at this location. And that's gonna be the end of this part. At this point, you're building all of the power poles, one, two, and three. You're building all of the logistics chests, and right next to it, you have the rover ports. You have assemblers, you have modules mark one, you have the sort of circuit items you need, and then because there's room for it, we just tacked in the turret here. There is one space open, so do feel free to use that for whatever you want. Before we dive into the final build, I'd like to take a moment to thank all the Patreon supporters who make it possible for me to make videos like this. You may have noted that there are no sponsors on this channel, and that's because I rather want this to be a community sponsored channel for as long as that is possible. So thank you very much for all the support from the Patreon supporters. If you want to support the channel and what I do, then pledging on Patreon is a great way. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at the last third of our hub, the last section here. This one is, well, it, it's a bit of everything else, but it does still have some logical groupings. Pipes, rails, nuclear is what I call it. You can also call it chemical. Let's stamp it down and see what, what comes of it. What you will immediately notice is that this one is taking a lot more materials in. This I've done because there are a few things that need stone and iron ore and stone bricks and water. So instead of sort of having those on multiple lines, I've collected everything that reached stone bricks on one, one line, similarly to everything that requires copper wire is collected here. And um, let's, let's go through it and see what we have here. So this is actually, we have first power production, is here. Also, first, maybe uh, note that we are actually producing pipes and putting the pipes out on half of both of these previously gear belts. It uh, it helps a lot because many of the things on this, this section is actually using is using pipes. So what we have here first, we have some basic power. You're gonna need that early. Then we have furnaces, so those are also available to help you scale up. Let's go up here. We have trains at this point, locomotives, wagons, and fluid wagons. We have the rest of the rail part over here the signals the stations and of course the rails then we have sort of mixed in around everywhere a lot of the chemical production so we have the refineries the chemical plants underground belts storage tanks pumps and pump jacks right here in the middle we have a machine that's going to run very slowly but it will run continuously and this one will just gradually make engines these engines are going into Locomotives, pumps, and also flame turrets. I put the flame turret here because, yeah, well, it had to be next to next to an engine build, and I didn't want to make an, another engine build. So that means military. The two military items that I have on the hub are actually split between two different locations. But that's because it fits here. At the end here, we have concrete produ produced. I'm building a lot of concrete here. We are also making refined concrete. This one is making into refined concrete. I was a bit in doubt whether to add refined concrete. It's quite expensive to build and maybe you don't want to build it too early. On the other hand, this is this is up to you. If you don't want to build it, you can just go in here and block it off. But it it is one of the things that when I want to make refined concrete, I usually struggle to figure out where to build it. So now I've incorporated it into this hub and then uh, you can build it from there. At this point, you can see that the amount of pipes we're making isn't really su sufficient to get all the way through here. That's that's okay because um, right now we're filling up the buffers. Most of these things will be filling up a buffer and then it'll be idle. Once you have built your refineries, you're not having a constant consumption of refineries. So once it's built up, it'll just proceed. 
and stuff like the underground pipes will then start consuming the remainder. If I put the underground pipes first, then all the all the other things downstream wouldn't get any. So that's why I'm, I'm putting it here. And that should be pretty much the first tier of this. So keep in mind, all these three, you should be uh, building these immediately when you have a bus available, then stamp those down so that you can you can start grabbing materials here very easily. Now we go to the second tier. You have unlocked the red circuits. They are now being brought into this location. And the first thing you want to do is again, use the upgrade planner to upgrade everything to red belts. There we go. At this point we take again the blueprint and we go one, two, three. And we can see that a number of things, seven new assemblers are being added. We'll start with this one. I've added tanks to this. It's not strictly necessary in a lot of cases, but it there was a room for it. There was room for it here. It was feasible. It's one of the things that require engines. And the thing is, if you go out into wilderness and lose the keys to your tank, it's really nice to come back to the hub and just find that there is another tank available for you. It's a convenience. Don't build it if you don't like it. But I think it's nice to have an automatic build so that we have a tank. Sometimes I, I have a tendency to lose those. Don't know where they go, but they just get lost. The other big thing that we are building is the nuclear power coming up here, as well as the electric furnaces. So we basically have all three furnaces in the same hub. And then we have the nuclear power. If we look at it, we also have all the power ingredients in here. This is of course built here next to our concrete plants because these two items require concrete. The way I've set it up for this part is that I've set up the amounts being requested, 84, and then I've set here, 42. I've set those up to be corresponding, and this is most important, four, to build a small nuclear power plant, a two by two nuclear power plant, which will require four reactors, 84 turbines, and then my recommendation would be half of that 42 heat exchangers. I built this. If you want to build something bigger, you can change the numbers yourself. Or you can remember that when this one has four, there will be, and it's in an idle state, there will be two more standing in here. Now, this is going to take a very long time for this to build up, but it doesn't matter, actually, at least in my opinion, because once you build it, you've unlocked your nuclear research, just build it, do something else, and then after a while go, oh yeah, by the way, I have everything I need now. Uh, one thing that to mention about this, it's the biggest of the hub sections you can see here. However, it's also the one that requires the least materials, despite the fact that there are many more belts inbound. All of these things are very low consumption. There's very few of these things that you need in vast quantities. Rails is one thing, underground pipes are another thing. But aside from this, you don't need that many trains or that many pumps or other things. So this one will be very low throughput. The main one that has high throughput is the one with belts and inserters. And now the final upgrade of the final hub section. At this point, we will again upgrade it to blue belts, upgrade the assemblers to red to yellow assemblers, and upgrade the chest to storage chest. At this point, one, two, three. Stamp it down on top. Because these are low throughput, there's no need to put in beacons, in my opinion, here. You can do it if you like, but I don't find a, a need for it. The main part of, of this is you, you will get slightly more throughput, for example, for the nuclear power production. But the main part is now that all of these are converted into logistics chests. That means you can request them, you can have construction bots construct directly from this. And that's the main advantage and why this one has to be upgraded to tier 3 as well. Now at this point, you have actually completed the entire hub consisting of these three segments and you're producing pretty much all the things you will need in the base. There are some exceptions and let me just go through with it because there are some deliberate choices being made. I have not added solar panels, accumulators and laser turrets. The reason for me not adding those is because they are very high throughput. They need a lot, but mainly because they are being used for creating satellites, not the laser turrets. The solar panels of accumulators should not be built in a hub because the hub is only for base construction. It should not be for science production. The laser turrets use exactly the same items as accumulators and solar panels if you combine the ingredients. Therefore, I always build laser turrets together with those. And otherwise, I would have to bring batteries into the hub. And I don't really, didn't really feel like doing that. It, it would take more space and it wouldn't really give us any additional value, in my opinion. 
Other thing that isn't there, modules mark three. Those require a very high quantity of item, so I don't want to have it here. This should be a separate build because of exactly the high quantity. It's also something that will just consume all of your red and blue circuits, so don't build it. Don't build it here. If there's anything you feel that I'm missing or you have some ideas for improvement, then let me know in the comment section below. That's uh, why it's there. If you've made it this far into the video, then I'm hoping and also assuming a bit that you have enjoyed yourself. If you have, then consider hitting the like button. It shows me and uh, the YouTube algorithm that this is a good video. And also consider sharing it with you see other people who might find this useful. There are more Factorio Masterclass videos on my channel, as well as more being added continuously, as well as new and uh, continuing Let's Plays. So if you want to catch more of the content I'm producing here on the channel, then uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you have ideas for future episodes of the Factorio Masterclass or anything else, any other feedback, you are of course welcome to hit the comment section below. Really appreciate all the comments. I read them all. I don't always reply to all, but I certainly read them all. If you want more Factorio content, then let me recommend that you jump on over to Twitch, where I am streaming Factorio Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 8 p.m. Central European time. The address is twitch.tv slash Nilos, and you can also find the link in the description below. That brings us to the end of this Factorio Masterclass. I hope that you have enjoyed it and maybe learned a thing or two. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, stay effective.